Father, your word is a challenging word for us today. We pray for the grace to understand what it is that Jesus is saying to us and why. In St. Teresa of Calcutta, we ask your intercession for each of us here that we might know the Lord more deeply so that we might love him and really put him first. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Where is my allegiance? Whose am I? And to whom do I belong? Where is my allegiance? Whose am I? And to whom do I belong? Those are the questions that sum up the gospel for me, quite honestly. I'll just offer them to us as um, provocative questions, not only to pray about today and the remainder of this liturgy, but also throughout the course of this week, because I think somehow each of them in their own way helps us to get at the heart of what it is that Jesus is very directly confronting us with today. Father Prentice and I were at uh, dinner a couple nights ago. We had uh, a set of folks over to the house, and oftentimes as comes up, as people get to know Father, they, uh, they just begin to ask his story. For those of you uh, who are unaware, Father's a, a convert to the Catholic faith. He was a, not only an evangelical, he was an evangelical pastor. And so people are curious as to how it is that he came into the church and uh, as he was telling his story, one of the people who was sitting there said to him something to the effect of, oh, I always have such, such jealousy, almost an envy of those who are converts to Catholicism. I, I often wonder what it would have been like to, to have chosen to be Catholic. I think I understood what she was saying. I know I understood what she was saying. I have a holy jealousy as I'm watching the adults get baptized in the font on Holy Saturday. And yet, in what she was saying, she somehow seemed to miss a really crucial point, which I think Jesus wants to make sure we don't miss today. And the crucial point is simply this. You cannot be Catholic by birth. You can't be Catholic because your mom and dad are. You can't even be Catholic simply because you were baptized. You might be raised Catholic, as I was when I was a child by my parents, but for each and every one of us, sooner or later, we're confronted with a decision that we have to make. And if some of us are here today and we're oblivious to that fact, we're unaware of the fact that we've ever had to make a decision, then please hear Jesus in the gospel because Jesus is confronting us with the necessity to make a decision today. And he's laying out in front of us the conditions that are necessary to be a disciple. And they are extreme. If, if anybody else says what Jesus says, we would run. New members of the parish get a, a letter from me. I welcome them all individually. People who are leaving the parish don't get a letter because they don't write me to tell me that they're leaving, but new members get a letter. Imagine if I wrote this in the letter. Hey, the angels are here. We're so glad to have you in the parish. Welcome. Here's the requirements for membership at Our Lady of Good Counsel. Um, you must hate your mother and father, wife, husband, even yourself, and put me first. I think we're going to look for another church. Right? Jesus just said that. So what are we doing here? So mindful that the gospel is a very challenging one, let's make sure that we understand what it is that Jesus is not saying, what it is that he is saying. Then let's see, mindful that today is the canonization of St. Teresa of Calcutta, if she has anything that she might be able to offer us that would be helpful, 
Let's think about what it is that we might be able to do in response. And then lastly, why is this demand of Jesus so important? So, the gospel. Is Jesus literally saying what it sounds like Jesus is saying? Is he just doing away with the commandments? Remember when they come to Jesus, what's the greatest of all the commandments? He reduces it to one thing with two parts. Love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Suddenly now he's saying, no, hate your mother, father, wife, husband, even your own life. Some of us might remember there's a commandment to love and honor your mother and father. Hopefully we all remember that. Is Jesus just doing away with that? No. So the word he uses when he says hate amongst our Jewish brothers and sisters, it's kind of an expression, which is an intense word, but it means something more like love less. So that mitigates it somewhat, but it's still a bit challenging, right? Jesus is saying, if you today choose to follow me, you must love less your mother, father, brother, sister, friend, even yourself, then you love me. Just pause right there. Think of your mother, father, husband, wife, son, daughter, friend, and ask yourself, as I ask myself, do I really love Jesus more than them? Really? And if not, why not? If you're one of the people who's sitting there going, I don't know that that's true, then I would ask you and encourage you to ask the Holy Spirit to help you to know the Lord more deeply and to be clear that that's what he's asking of us. This, this is not a real successful stump speech, right? Right? This is not how you attract followers. In fact, it seems as though the Lord is trying to discourage us from following him. Imagine the next or the first presidential debate if one of them speaks like this. Well, I guess we're not going to vote for you. It could very well be the case that many fewer of us walk out of this church today than walked in thinking, I'm going to be a Christian. Because maybe we've never heard the call and the demand. We'll get to the why in a second. What about this whole renounce thing? Whoever of you does not renounce all of his possessions or all of her possessions cannot be my disciple. Let's be honest, people. We live in Plymouth or Canton, or Novi, or Northville, or Birmingham, or Dearborn, wherever we live, if we live around here, we have an abundance of possessions. Do we own them, or do they own us? One of the early saints, speaking to someone once, commenting upon their gold necklace says, what difference does it make if it's gold or iron? It's still a chain. Is Jesus asking each and every one of us to leave here today, sell everything we have so that we can follow him? No. Some he does. What's he asking of us? He's asking us to put them last, to reject them, to renounce them, to be detached from them, really detached from them, so that we see everything we have as a gift from him and we're ready to give it whenever he asks. Do we see all of our possessions as his? Or are they all mine? And I'm going to just kind of grudgingly give a few of them up every once in a while. 
like when we need a new roof or when I see the homeless guy in the street. So Jesus isn't asking me to, to actually literally hate people, and he's not asking me to sell everything. What is he asking me? He's asking me for real to put him first. The way St. Paul put it was this. The love of Christ urges us on because we're convinced that one has died for all and therefore all have died. And he, that is to say Jesus, died for all so that, here's the key, those who live might live no longer for themselves but for him who for our sakes died and has been raised. Is that true? Are you and I, here and now, for real, living for ourselves? Am I first? And I squeeze God in? Or is he first? And I squeeze me in? That's the call to discipleship, brothers and sisters. Mother Teresa, one time when she was praying, the Lord said to her something that went like this. They don't love me, meaning people like me. They don't love me because they don't know me. It's the challenge when we're young, which is when we're supposed to make a decision to put the Lord first when we make our confirmation. That's supposed to be the place where we realize, okay, I was raised Catholic, but now it's my decision. But here's the challenge. For many children, when they're getting confirmed, I don't know the Lord well enough to make a decision. How can I possibly say I'm going to put him first and follow him when I've never met him? And that's where many of us might be here today. If that's the case, who cares about what's in the past? Recognize what's coming up in the future. So if you're sitting here today, as undoubtedly many of us are, and I were to ask you personally, do you have a friendship with Jesus? You would go, uh, a what? Uh, no, I'm Catholic. <laughs> I go to church sometimes. Uh, friendship? Uh, not quite sure I understand what you're talking about. If you don't know if you have a friendship with Jesus, I hate to say this, but you don't have one. Like if you're in a friendship, you know it. If you don't have a friendship with the Lord, you know you don't have a friendship with the Lord. If that's where you are today, there's no shame in that. There's, I'm not trying to point a finger at somebody. I'm just trying to say if that's the case, there's a couple things coming up that you might want to make a note of. One's called Alpha. It starts not this week, but next week. It's just an introduction to the person of Jesus so that I can get to know him so that I can love him. You might want to consider coming to that. Or check out Becoming Catholic, which starts this week on Thursday nights. It's not just for those of us who aren't Catholic who are thinking of coming into communion with the church. It's for any of us who just feel like, I don't think I know the faith. I want to know the faith better. Or maybe it's a discipleship group that we're just starting. But if that's where we are, if I don't know I know him, so that we don't just go through the motions when we come to church and mouth words, then maybe those are things we might want to think about. Undoubtedly, there's a few of us here who do know Jesus. I have met him, but in all honesty, I've been putting off making a decision to really put him first. And if that's where you are or where I am, <laughs> then the Lord would say something like, Today's a day to ante up. And to not play games anymore. Why is this so important? Why does Jesus ask us of this or ask this of us? Here's why. It's simple. And this is not at all the message that you and I hear in the culture in which we live. I know that. The answer is because to be human, to be a man or a woman, is to be essentially religious. It's not an add-on. It's not something for those who want a little something more. It's not for those who are looking for a crutch or an opiate. To be human is to be essentially religious. Religion just means a binding relationship. You and I, as creatures of God, were made to be in a binding relationship with God. That is to say, a friendship with God. That's what he made me for. That's why I exist. I exist to be loved and to love. To be loved by God first, then to love him back and everything else that he's made afterwards. So 
So back to this woman at the dinner the other night. Maybe she's here, maybe she's not. If she's here, I pray she's confronted with the reality that right now the Lord's asking her to make a decision for herself. But forget about her. You and I are here right now, and I'm being confronted by Jesus to make a decision. Again, doesn't matter what I decided yesterday. Yesterday's gone. I'm here today, and you're here today. So let's ask for the grace throughout this Mass and throughout this day to take Jesus' words very seriously and to be very serious and aware of what we're saying back to him.